Hey everybody, welcome to the Raw Online Report. Today's guest is somebody everyone is talking about right now. Everybody. Uh, sometimes when a guy wins a show, he doesn't get as much hype as a guy who takes second place. In this case, that is so, so true. Please welcome Akeem Williams to the show. Hey Akeem, how are you? Hey Ron, thanks for having me, man. So, uh, first thing I want to get out of the way is spelling of your name, because I think I've been messing it up. Is it A-K-I-M or A-K-E-I-M? A-K-I-M. Okay, good. Some websites are spelling your name wrong. You might want to look into that. <laughs> so, yeah, I was in Toronto, obviously, and uh, wow, so impressed, because I'm going to be very honest with you. There's two guys who I think are have amazing physiques, incredible, like, Olympia-caliber physiques, who have never really put it together. One is Lionel Banky. Number two is you, Akeem Williams. I've been waiting and waiting. I said, if this guy ever gets together, and I'll be honest with you, I gave up on you. I'm like, that's it. I give up. I've been waiting so long for this guy. I'm not going to. No, no. But, man, you surprised everybody. You made it happen. And, uh, wow, so impressed, so impressed with what you brought to the Toronto Pro this past weekend. Um, where to begin? Where to begin? So two weeks before that, uh, I saw your New York Pro, and mm -hmm. that was the typical Akim Williams. Huge, full, of course, as always, awesome shape, awesome structure. Uh, you know, you could take your pick of amazing body parts, but condition wasn't really there, and you ended up in 10th place, which, you know, maybe you could have been a little higher, but, you know. I, I think, I, I think, I mean, my condition wasn't bad in New York. I think the light hurts me, hurt me a lot in New York. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of, I probably was a little bit too full. Yeah. So that didn't help me either, but uh, it was just, you know, a learning experience from New York, you know. You're, you know, you're right. I, I have to take that back because I was sitting next to Milos Sarchev, and I have a good eye for physique, but Milos has an eagle expert eye. Milos yeah. does not miss a thing. And I was, he heard me doing the play-by-play -play next to me into my phone, and I mm -hmm. said, uh, Akim, you know, uh, condition is off, and he elbowed me. He said, look again, look again. Yeah, yeah. So I looked, I said, hmm, you know, you're right, especially from the rear shots. I said, you know, his, his glutes and hams are actually tighter than I ever remember seeing them. But, like, uh, I have, I have uh, pictures, you know, the day before and uh, pictures the morning of the show and stuff like that, and uh, I looked insane, you know. I, I thought I'd definitely be in the first call. I, you know, I think we probably just overcarved up a little bit too much because of the, the breakfast I tried to eat in the morning. Like, my body's weird, so whenever I do sugar, it, it doesn't work out well for me, you know. So we had some jam and stuff like that, and I, I, I already know I can't do sugar when I'm carving up. Well, let's back up to last year's New York Pro because you came back from Kuwait. And everyone's like, okay, let's see what they can do. Oxygen Gym, you know, it's, it's a magical wonderland for bodybuilders. You know, <laughs> if, they, if, if anybody can get Akeem looking crazy, it's going to be the camel crew. And, you know, you were a, a monstrous. What did you weigh last year in New York Pro? Like 270, 275? About 275, yeah. 275, yeah. Just enormous. Like, you know, there, there's not many guys out there who remind me of, like, Ronnie Coleman, that type of mass where it's just, oh, my God, look at that. That's That's – crazy is that a human being it's like a cartoon <laughs> character and you know you brought that but yeah condition could have been better obviously new york last year 275 but yeah whew, impressive and i think you were fifth right last year in new york yeah, fifth last year. Um, yeah and you showed up in much better condition this year and all the way down in 10th like you said yeah. the light the lighting and you know i don't know i don't know what's up with that lighting because I, I don't think it was doing anyone any favors yeah uh, when you saw the high resolution images later that guys took or the photographers, you got a better appreciation because they could zoom in. But at that particular show, there's a whole VIP section in front of the stage, so like ten yeah. or twelve rows. Yeah. Then the judges are in back of that, and then you know I'm like right behind them, and then everyone else is going back, back, back. So from where we were sitting, nobody looked that great. Trust me. Yeah. You know, even Nathan looked off. Juan, who I'm sure wasn't off didn't look spectacular then at toronto showed different lighting and everybody all, all of a sudden looked better but you know i'm obsessed with body weight and stuff what did you what did you weigh for new york pro uh right around like maybe about 260 about 260 65 yeah okay yeah. so 260 you were 248 at toronto <laughs> toronto yeah which is probably what the lightest what did you win north american at back in was it 2010 <laughs> i was actually heavier than that <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying but this is you know would you say i mean i looked i went back and looked at pictures of when you won tampa two years ago and uh you were in better shape by far here i think than when you won tampa so yeah it was close i mean uh, to me I, we went back to the drawing board and 
I, one of my best looks was uh, 2016 Baltimore. Okay. Where I played second to Victor Martinez. A lot of people say I should have won that show too. Yeah. But uh, we went back to the drawing board and tried to go for that look for the Toronto show. Yeah. So. Okay. So you've learned that you can't eat sugar. Sugar what? It makes you, it makes you spill over. Makes you hold water. What does it do to you? Yeah, yeah. It makes definitely makes me spill over. Yeah. Because I mean, they people have been saying there's a couple guys that they always said that their skin is thick or whatever. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even a real thing. Obviously, some people do have thicker skin than others, but you know, you showed I, this. I, I mean, I've, I've never been the type of guy that show up not like 100% in shape. I'm in shape, but it's just sometimes, you know, yeah. just peeking for the show. Sometimes it doesn't go the way I planned it, you know? Yeah. You know, I bust my ass out all the time, you know, do everything I'm supposed to do, but just sometimes if you just don't peek right, you know? Yeah. And that's, that has been my problem. I just haven't had the, you know, the, 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 the person there to show me, you know, how to peek right. Right. And finally, this time around, we you know, we nailed it, you know? So let's talk. Let's talk for a little bit about who you worked with. You worked with Oscar Ardon, who is probably best known for working with Kai Green during his, you know, all those years he was taking second to Phil Heath at the Olympia and winning. You know, he won his fair share of shows, three Arnold Classics and whatnot. How did you? You must. You know, you're from the same general area. How long have you known Oscar? Well, I've known about Oscar for a while, but uh, I've never, you know, I never reached out to him or anything like that, you know, because. I used to work with uh, Dave Palombo before, and um, before I head out to the camera crew and stuff like that. And you know, I got I came back home after Kuwait, and uh, you know, just wanted to try something different. You know, I felt like you know, I I've been training myself for the longest since I started bodybuilding. I never like really trained as a bodybuilder. I trained more as a powerlifter. Mm. And you know, sometimes you just gotta take a seat back and uh, try something different. You know, so I decided to you know, reach out to Oscar and try to do the bodybuilding approach, you know. And we this is what we did. We trained like, as a bodybuilder for this show. Both for New York and Toronto, we actually trained as a bodybuilder. So when did you actually start working with Oscar? Uh, right around um, December. Okay, so it's, it's been less, it's been about six months even. Yeah. So uh, I know from talking to Evan and watching the Kai videos that he actually likes to be hands-on and have you come up to, does he still have that like private gym and was it Brooklyn? Yeah, he's a, it's a private gym in Queens. He has a new gym right now that he just, he's, he's not open to the public yet, but uh, um, it's a private gym, yeah. So would you go up, have you been going up there and training with him this whole time? Yeah, yeah. So I'm driving at least maybe, what, two hours a day? Wow. So, well, actually, actually, more than two hours, because it's two hours to go see him and two hours to come back. Oh, wow. It's probably about four hours a day. It's like your whole day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So has it been every workout you were doing with him for these past few months? Pretty much, you know, the majority of the big workouts, you know, like legs, back, you know, uh, chest, you know, majority of the big lifts, you know, sometimes I'll take the weekends off. Now, you were, you were known, you've been known, you, obviously, you're one of the strongest guys. I know we always, every, like, year I do a different article on a different guy saying the world's strongest bodybuilder. You, you're one of those. I think I've done a couple with that title for you because you're, you know, it's debatable who's the strongest bodybuilder, but you, mm -hmm. you're definitely up there in the, you know, the handful of guys that you could count as one of the strongest. You've done some crazy, crazy lifts in the gym, but <laughs> you've also been doing real low reps for most of these years, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's one of the things that we changed with Oscar. You know, like you know, before I would squat five, I would squat six plates, but I would just stop at ten. You know, I'm with Oscar now. We're doing six plates. We're doing fifteen, almost trying to get twenty reps. You know, so it's, it's a huge difference, man. It's a huge difference. So it's not for the faint of heart. You're still training as heavy, but now you're doing way more reps. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely not for like a lot of people can't train like that. Yeah, you have to be like a little bit insane to train the way Oscar trained. <laughs> so would you say this was like the hardest you ever trained in your life? I think so. Yeah, definitely yeah. the hardest in terms of the push. Yeah. Sometimes you know, last time we we did what? I want I want to say we did five plates for twenty some reps. Wow. I mean, and that that you got to dig deep to get that, you know. Because I've seen big space for like twenty reps. You have to dig deep to get stuff like that, you know. You you have videos, plenty of stuff where you posted, doing a mm -hmm. uh, crazy. I want to, you know, you please correct me because I'm just rattling this off the top of my head. But I think you've done like, you know, four hundred five pound shoulder presses and four ninety five mm -hmm. pound incline presses. Mm -hmm. But if I recall, it was always like I want to say like four or five reps. Was that the yeah. range that you worked in? Yeah. And it worked, obviously. I mean, you built all kinds of size. But yeah. was that the first thing that Oscar did was sort of get you into more of that bodybuilder range of reps? Yeah, that was the first thing we did. You know, he, he did all that whole, like, three, four rep stuff went out the window. Mm. And we started doing everything above 15 reps. Wow. Yeah. Like the same weight, too, I bet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the weight go up, 
the 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 way the way go up, but the rep stays the same, you know. Wow. So even if we're doing twenty reps, you know, with two hundred pounds, you go up to four hundred pounds and still do twenty reps, you know. Jeez. So you know, after did you what kind of results did you see? Did you see any more muscle growth out of that? Did you see a change in the quality, the detail of the muscle? Definitely a uh, change in the detail of the muscle. Yeah. Because uh, when I started this prep, you know, I, off season, I, I tried. I tried my best this offseason not to get too heavy, so I stayed right around like 285, yeah. 290. You know, I didn't get up to 300 this time around. Yeah. And when we started this prep, you know, we literally just like every week, I would just uh, drop a few pounds and stuff like that, and uh, just keep adding muscle. And then it looked it looked amazing. It was I was really happy with the results. You know, yeah. I didn't have to lose a whole bunch of weight. You know, water weight and stuff like that. There's a uh, there's videos on YouTube from other people and. It- so I don't know if the the weight is accurate, but were you up to like 320, 330 pounds at some points? Yeah, I was up to like about 320 at one point, yeah. And you can't, you know, I'm not the tallest guy, but you can't be more than like 5'10", right? Yeah, I'm 5'10". 5'10", 330, okay. That's about, uh, it's about Ronnie. Actually, Ronnie was a little taller than you when he was, he's shorter now, obviously. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that was about as big as Ronnie ever got. Five, I'm going to say 5'10", 5'11", 320, 330, so... When I say, when I compare you to Ronnie Coleman, I'm not just I'm not just being ridiculous. It's a, it's a legit comparison size wise. Um, so two weeks between New York and Toronto, and such a different look. At what point in those two weeks did you see the real shift happening, where you started seeing a look that you had never really seen before in your physique? Well, right after after New York, you know, we didn't get the call out that we wanted to. You know, Arthur just told me, you know, don't get discouraged. Yeah. Let's just go back to the drawing board and just. Uh, just you know, just focus and suffer and uh, try to bring a look. You know that you know it's different from before. So we just went back, died hard, and uh, get ready for Toronto. Yeah, people are always going to want to know about the diet. I don't want to give all the secrets away because some people are just going to copy your diet and try to sell it or something. But you know, what kind of what kind of carbs were you on? What kind of what kind of calories were you on for that show? Because obviously you you had to suffer. You had to suffer to get down to two forty eight. There's no other way. Well, I mean, we definitely cranked up the cardio a lot. Hmm. How much? <laughs> At least like two, two and a half hours a day. Okay. You know, the cardio was intense. You know, not, a lot more intense. Too. Not the step mill. Both step mill, uh, yeah. Oh, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you never want to see another one of those again. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we, we, we introduced a lot of uh, white meat, you know, a lot of fish and stuff like that in there. Yeah. So, so. How, how low were the carbs? Or did, did you cycle them? We cycle, yeah, we cycle on and off, you know, nothing too crazy because sometimes when I go too low carbs, I start holding water, mm. and oh, that's one thing I've noticed about me too, so yeah, I can't really do the low carb stuff, Yeah. so we got to keep some carbs in there a little bit, not just a little bit to just keep the muscle, you know. I mean, someone your size, what's a little bit? Because I'm sure it's different for someone, you know. Maybe that, about a, a hundred, a hundred grams. Yeah, that's, that's not much. For 50, yeah. <laughs> so what was your, what were your, what were your energy levels like in? everything during this uh, past few weeks? I, I would say I was just going off of adrenaline, man. Even now, I'm getting ready for the muscle mayhem. It's just adrenaline, you know. Yeah. I wake up every morning at 4, 4.30 a.m. to go do cardio. So go to bed, like, maybe, like, 11, get up at 4.30 a.m. to do cardio, and then go back and sleep after I have my first meal. So yeah. it's just I'm just going off adrenaline, you know. Yeah. I mean, how many hours, you to get it done? How many hours of sleep all together a day? Uh, I'll try to get at least eight, man. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not gonna lie to you. With all the cooking and stuff I have to do, and you know, right. sh- sh- I try to get at least eight. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I hear people say they get five or six, I kind of cringe because that's that's not good for any physique, unless you're exactly. one of those rare people that can really get by on it. Which mm-hmm. I don't think there's many people like that. And especially if you're training with somebody like Oscar, you have to get some rest. You know. Yeah. So uh, talk about Oscar just a little more. He was also known not just for what he does physically in the gym with you, but, you know, from all those Kai videos especially, you got a glimpse into the way he works with your mindset, your attitude, your belief in yourself. Was, was that a big part of, of him coaching you too? Uh, definitely, you know, we wanted, we wanted to make sure that I was more, felt like I was lacking confidence on Sage. You know, sometimes in your head, you know, people see what you look like, but in your head you don't, you don't see the same thing. Yeah. So we wanted to just have that, you know, that mindset that, you know, you, you're a champion and uh, project that on stage and stuff like that, right. you know? I mean, I'm jumping ahead here, but in the final comparisons, pose down and all that in Toronto, you know, I, I was looking, I always look at the faces to try to see what's going on inside people's heads. Mm-hmm. And I, I felt like looking at you, 
I said, Akim knows he doesn't have this. He, he knows it's, it's not going to go his way. Am I right? Did, was that an accurate assessment? <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get anybody in that hot water. But let's go back to, to the show itself. You know, how it was very close. They had a lot of direct comparisons where it was just you and Juan. I mean, Cedric, Cedric's got a great physique, but he was never in the running for this. Uh, fourth and fifth place guys were good. They were never. It was a two-man battle. It was definitely the Akeem and Juan Morel show. There's no, there's no question about that. So, you know, he believes he's a great bodybuilder and deserved to win. You believe you're a great bodybuilder and deserved to win, which you have to. This is not a team sport. Everybody's yeah. out to win. That's why you go through all this shit and suffer. Time, money, mm -hmm. effort, everything, you know, everything, everything has to lead to that one moment. So I could ask him the same thing, but I can't interview him because he's reflect. So here you are. I want to ask you, where do you feel you beat him in Toronto or in general? I mean, me and Juan have been friends for years, you know. Yeah. We used to be trading partners together and stuff like that. You know, right. we came up together and everything like that. So it was definitely amazing, you know, just being the last two guys on stage with somebody that I've looked up to because, you know, when I got into bodybuilding, he was already bodybuilding, yeah. you know, and he showed me some of the ropes and stuff like that. So it, w it was definitely, you know, great to be on stage with him. But uh, like you said, it, it's a battle up there. And uh, I felt like, you know, I brought a really, really great package, especially from what I did from New York to Toronto. I felt like, you know, definitely should have gotten the, the nod to get that W based on the changes that I've made, you know. Uh, you were, but, you, were, you know, yeah. I'm not a judge, and I got to respect the judge's decision. So, you know, congratulations to Juan. You know, right. I'm just going to focus and uh, try to head out to Muscle Mayhem and uh, try to duplicate what I did for Toronto and bring a great package here. So what happens. I mean, you know, it's it, it's got to give you a, a good feeling. Uh, your confidence level has to be up because, you know, you finally cracked the code. You and Oscar together. All these years, we've been, you've been close, close, close. The condition's always been like, mm, just a little more, Akeem, please, a little more. Now you finally figured all that out. And, uh, you know, I've always said, that, like I said about Lionel, if this guy ever gets in crazy shape, you guys are all in trouble. You're all in trouble because this, this guy's deadly. So do you have a lot more confidence going into muscle mayhem knowing that you've mastered the condition, the peaking part? I mean – Definitely have more confidence going into the show, you know, because, you know, I just came off the momentum from coming in second and stuff like that. But uh, it's not it's not done yet. You know, I still I still feel like, you know, my back double bicep needs some work, Yeah. you know, and uh, I know with Oscar's help, we're going to get that fixed, you know. So hopefully I can get the qualification for the Olympia and like just bring lights out package for the Olympia. That's the goal for this year, you know, just get that qualification in and just really hammer it home for the Olympia and bring a package that everybody's like, holy shit. Yeah, because, I mean, you know? you, you've been to the Olympia how many times now? Uh, only once. Only once. 2016. But, I mean, yeah. I don't think you got much of a look at, in 2016. No, I didn't know. But, you know, if you if you bring that look that you brought to Toronto or even a little sharper, mm -hmm. you have 15 weeks to go? About close to it, yes. You know, Oscar, is a, he's a master at targeting, specific, just like Charles Glass, looking at a certain area of the physique and trying to fill it in. Mm-hmm. It's no secret you need that area like around the shoulder blades, around the scapula, some yeah. more beef right there, and you're done. Yeah. I mean, yeah. arms just like this, legs like this. Yeah. Your front double bicep is just. I'm trying to think of who else had a front double bicep like that over the years, and uh, the only guy I can really think of is Victor Richards, where it was that freaky with the little waist and the, just everything just burst out like that. <laughs> um, so is that the game plan? Are you guys going to really work on trying to fill that in a little bit for the Olympics? Yeah, yeah, that's been the goal for now. Just try to, uh, in, uh, you know, just cap on my shoulders some more. You know, yeah. when I started bodybuilding, I didn't really give a crap about like training shoulders and stuff like that. So <laughs> now it's finally catching up to me because my arm grows so much and everything like that. So now I have to work extra hard to really build up my shoulders. You know? Yeah, I mean, you were you, you train more like I, I won't say power lifter because they they don't do much in the way of the isolation exercises like we got we do. But you were definitely into the super heavy weights for years and years. Yeah. But, I mean, it paid off because you started training weighing what, like 150 or something? Uh, well, 147, yeah. 147. <laughs> so you ended up putting on, you know, jeez, uh, almost 200 pounds eventually. That is insane. <laughs> well, you, double, you more than doubled your weight. Which yeah, is, basically. <laughs> that's something like a baby does in the first six months of its life. But human beings typically don't ever do that once they've <laughs> reached adult height and weight. But you did it. Uh, so back in the beginning, I was talking about how sometimes when a guy takes second and it's controversial, and uh, 
you know, I'm not going to come in with it's controversial. I, you know, we all have our preferences. We all like what we like. You know, you're missing one thing. Uh, one, I don't like Juan's quads. He knows this. It's nothing personal. He could be my best friend, and I'm going to say I don't like your quads. Awesome hamstrings. Upper body's massive. Great back. Great shoulders. Uh, but yeah, th those quads, they kill me in a lot of shots. And like your back, you know, I'm not in, in certain shots. I like, I, I just wish there was more right here with him. And that's, we're always looking for perfection. When we see guys, mm -hmm. I see guys like you that I, that I know have a potential to be just, you know, you have Olympia potential. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's, that, that goes without saying. I mean, the, you look at guys who have that and it's a rare few, but you do. So, but back to what I was saying. Sometimes when a guy takes second and a lot of people disagree with the decision, as was the case in Toronto, that actually helps you out more in terms of gaining more fans, getting more publicity. Because, you know, who, who are people talking about this week? Are they talking more about Juan Morrell or are they talking more about Akeem Williams? That's a no-brainer. <laughs> look at the boards. Look at any of the boards. It's all about Akeem got, you know, I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying this. This is what people are saying. Akeem got robbed. Akeem should have won. What were the judges thinking? And like I said, we're, we're not judges. You know, they, they make exactly. their decisions. I'm not a judge, so. They have a very, very difficult job. And there's only one guy happy at the end of the night with the judges, and that's the winner. Nobody else yeah, is happy with the judges, trust me. <laughs> um, unless they were like a 15th place guy, and maybe now they got third or fourth. They might be happy. But but like I said, I think this actually helped you. I know you wanted to win. Winning would have been great. Adding, you know, that would have been your second pro win, but. Uh, you must be getting so much feedback, so many messages all over your social media, texts. What, what's the re what's the response been like from this for you? Oh uh, man, I just I've just been trying to like, just not even like get involved in, into it. You know, like I said, I'm not a judge. Right. I just gotta respect the judge's decision. So I'm, I'm just keep taking a back seat, you know, and just focus what I what, on what I can control, which is uh, get ready for the next show. You know, yeah. at the yeah. end of the day, the, the show is already over with. You know, congratulations. Like I said, congratulations to Juan. And I just got to keep on moving on from here. But I'm saying you must be getting a ton of positive feedback and encouragement from people, right? Of course, yeah, of course. And I, I want to say thank you to everybody that uh, reached out to me and uh, just showed me love and support. You know, you guys are amazing, and I uh, really appreciate all the support that people have been showing me this past weekend. You know, and I want to give you a chance because I know we, we've already talked about Oscar, but I'm sure there's other people that were on your team here that supported you and helped you out in this this prep. So, who are some people you want to acknowledge? Oh, uh, definitely, you have to give a shout out to my boy Abdullah from the camera crew yeah he's like a brother like a definitely family brother to me you know he's love that guy you know I, I, and I, could, I call him up and ask him for any advice or whatever so definitely a big thank you to abdullah you know for just being there for me you know just being a brother to me yeah. um also uh, my girlfriend you know she's amazing without her i probably wouldn't even get up to the cardio <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh man there's been so many people that's been instrumental in this whole prep man but uh definitely abdullah and my girlfriend they've been 100 percent so I just want to say thank you to both of them. So now that you mentioned Abdullah, do do you have any plans to go back there to visit to train over there anymore? No, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying no, but uh, like I said, when I was out there, I just built a relationship with you know with Abdullah. He's always, despite the hard place in New York, he's always been there, just checking up on me and making sure I'm there and just reminding me how good I could be and stuff like that. So you know, I've always, you know, gratitude towards him for just being there and just you know stuff yeah. like that. You know, so. Because, um, you know, like Regan Grimes was out there for a couple of weeks and it just wasn't for him. And he came right back. He cut his visit short because, you know, he's, he missed his home. He's got, mm -hmm. he's got a gym he's, he owns in uh, Ontario that he's trying to run. I mean, when we talked last, you had just gotten back from there. So you really, it hadn't all settled in. But what's it, what's it like for somebody who has friends and family and things going on back in you know, New Jersey to just leave everything behind and go somewhere where basically all you do is eat, sleep, train and watch Netflix? <laughs> I mean, for me, I, I spent what about four, four and a half months out there. Yeah, you were there. And uh, the first, the first, the first two months was really hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, you miss your family. I left my girlfriend at home. I'm, you know, you miss everything. You know. Yeah. Just being in America and stuff like that. But uh, you just gotta focus on why the reason why you came out there. You know, just to be your best. And uh, I eventually, one, once I established that in my head that this is why I made that sacrifice to come out there and try to be the best I could be. You know, it got a lot easier. Yeah. You know, but shout out to the guys out there in Camel Crew and Obata and those guys out there, man. It's an awesome gym. It was an amazing experience, you know, and I would, if I had to do it over again, I definitely would do it again. You know, mm -hmm. I met a lot of people out there, a lot of nice people, a lot of great people, you know, so 
Yeah. You know, I want to say thank you to all of them, Bada and everybody else. Thank you so much. Right. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm jealous. I would love to go to that place. It looks it looks like a bodybuilder's playground, like Disneyland, with every machine in the world you could possibly ever want to try and use, hit every little aspect of every muscle. But then I think back to, I watch my old Ronnie Coleman or Dorian Yates videos, and, you know, Ronnie's gym, Metroflex, have you, you've been there, right? Yeah. No, I've never been there, but I've seen I've seen a lot of videos of it. It's just weight. It's just a bunch of free weights, basically. You know, they, got, <laughs> they got the basic machines, but they don't have a lot of machines. It's tons and tons of giant, rusty, dusty dumbbells, barbells. You, you mm. want to know what's funny? Yeah. That was just like the, we call it the dungeon. Mm. Oscar's gym, that's what we call it, the dungeon. Really? So it, it sounds just like the dungeon because <laughs> there's no machines and stuff like that. It's just weights, man. He, he doesn't you vacuum know, either. It's a bunch of dust balls everywhere. No, I mean, he keeps it clean. He keeps it clean. <laughs> yeah. He definitely keeps it clean. Okay. You know, he has a cleaning. Somebody that comes in once a week and clean the gym and everything like that. Keeps it really clean. I got it. Metro, but, Metroflex, oh, I think uh, they think cleaning is for sissies because, <laughs> oh, boy, uh, you didn't want to touch anything. <laughs> if you're a germaphobe, you wouldn't make it past, like, the first yeah, yeah. 10 feet into that place. Uh, uh, Oscar's gym is it's all free weights. You know, you go in there, you don't have a choice. You have to lift. Yeah. Like free weights, you have you don't have a like a go do this machine or stuff like that. No, no. you have to squat, you have to deadlift, you have to bench press. You know, I mean, from watching the old Kai videos, it, it seems like he's a big believer in keeping the weights very heavy up until the show, so you keep that muscle fullness and density. Is that yeah. still is that still the way he trains? Yeah, yeah, you guys? yeah. I imagine so. I mean, <laughs> you, you didn't look like you've been pumping up with cables, you know, for the past nah. couple months on stage. Um, so okay, when did you when did you decide? How soon after Toronto, or did you already have Muscle Mayhem in mind? No, nah, I didn't have Muscle Mayhem in, in mind. I, I you know uh, Toronto was it for me. I wanted to show up there and uh, try to win that show, and uh, yeah. I thought about it after, and uh, I felt like it would be the right move to do. Yeah. Also, the promoter reached out to me and he asked me uh, would I be interested in doing the show. So definitely, I'm talking about Chad, to... right? Yeah, Chad the Diet Doc. Chad, return my text messages, man. Come on, I want to get you on the show. <laughs> Sometimes I got to be direct like that. So, okay. Uh, so, what's the game plan? You're going to try to duplicate pretty much everything that you did the last few days before Toronto? Yeah, definitely. Since I, I came back from Toronto, I've been right, I jumped right back on the diet, you know, yeah. everything that we were doing in the past. You know, and then my body is, is, is saying the same way I'm waking up, even the crazier right now. So, mm. you know, just pray to God that everything goes the way as planned. And, uh, Head back into uh, Kansas City and uh, see what happens. Yeah. Now I know you probably never had it in your head that I have to weigh this much on stage or anything. You just happen to be two seventy, two seventy five, mm -hmm. but you look so much better at a little bit under two fifty. Do you yeah. realize now that you know being lighter? Like if if we talk about uh, Flex Wheeler, we talk about guys like Ronnie, Kevin Lavroni. A lot of people, if you ask them, what was their best look of all time? It's usually a show where they were at pretty much their lightest as a pro or close to it. Mm -hmm. and like you said, you turned pro heavier than what you weigh now, right? Yeah. But you look so much better. I mean, it's an illusion. You have so much more detail and stuff going on. So, you know, I don't think you're ever going to, like, have a target weight to step on stage at. But is this – do you feel now that being lighter is definitely the key for you? Probably. Yeah. Probably. I think that's one of the things we've been looking at, too. Also, I, we just got to go like, in terms of like, especially the last week of the show. Yeah. We 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 figured out the system where we, we before we even eat any food or anything like that, we go by how I look first hmm. before we put anything to my body. So, okay. you know, so we don't just eat just to eat meals. You know. Yeah. So, so what we take the, it step by what, step. What are the foods that were messing you up the most? Like pancakes or something? Yeah, like, yeah. Any know. any of those like yeah, I can't I can't do those. Yeah. Got to like clean. Yeah. And yeah. too much. <laughs> That there's so many guys who think that's the key to filling out, but it seems to work wonders for, you know, 10% of people that do it, and it just Fs up the other 90%. But still people yeah, do it because I want those pancakes been my biggest now. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> Can wait, wait till Sunday to have your pancakes, guys. It's, it's, it's not worth it. Okay. Uh, all right, man. Uh, you've been so generous with your time. I know this was short notice, and you got – You've been a busy man. I'm sure you got a lot of catching yeah, I got, up. I got, I got to drive to see Oscar in a few minutes. <laughs> man, okay. Well, have a great workout. I appreciate it so much. I just want to congratulate you one more time, Akim. And uh, I apologize for giving up on you because, you know, you, you showed me that uh, it, it was possible. You know, you just had to crack that code and you did it. And now, 
Hey, man, at the end of the day, man, as long as you, you have life in you and uh, you can train the way you train, there's nothing is not impossible, you know. You just got to keep pushing, you know. Yeah. Can't just give up like that, you know. With me, like I said, I just keep working as hard as I can and someday you're going to find the formula, you know. Yeah, well, you found it. Uh, I think you're you're a lot more dangerous to the other guys now than you were before. And uh, I'm happy for you because I always saw that potential in you and always thought you had an incredible physique. I was just hoping, hoping, hoping you would put that last little bit together. And, man, I'm, I'm happy to see it. So happy to see it. It's Thank one, you, man. One of those cool things in, in the sport when you've been following people for years and years, and they, they finally surprise you like that. Yeah. You gained a lot of fans this last weekend, a lot, a lot of fans. Yeah. You know, you're a lot more popular now than you were a week ago, trust me. So, <laughs> and I, I don't know if winning would have been exact as good, honest to God. I really think the fact that it was a controversial second – that woke a lot of people up and said, let me take a closer look at this guy, Akeem Williams. He's really, really good. So, yeah, I think it's all working out the way it's supposed to work out for you, Akeem. So, Thank you, Ron. Let's just get you another win. Let's get you a win this weekend. It's, uh, it's on to the Olympia, yeah? Yep. Cool, man. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Right. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. This has been the Ron Line Report with Akeem Williams.